Hey, this is Sasha Evdikov, and thanks for joining me here for another episode of Let's Talk Stocks, episode number 135. Now, in this episode, what I'd like to do is share with you some wisdom or insight of who should not trade or invest in the stock market or invest at least actively. And you should be aware of some of these things because if you're doing some of these things or you have the mentality of this or you don't have the right skill sets, then probably you shouldn't be trading. So I'll give you some key things to look at, some key things to be aware of. And it's really important that you're self-aware to be able to understand if you're doing these things. So for example, if this is you and you're kind of looking at yourself from an outer perspective, you know, then it's important that you're aware that, okay, well, I'm looking at myself and am I doing this thing? Am I doing that thing? Is this thing going on in my life and is this the way that I'm thinking about? So I'll give you some fun little insight stories that have happened over the past, traders I've talked to, and some of the people that right away I know that probably they should take a step back and either focus a little more on their other educations or skill sets prior to getting into the market. So let's get started with this episode. All right, so the first one here, and these are in no particular order, but the first one here is really just picking up the phone and making a phone call. Okay, what's interesting about this is if you're not willing to pick up the phone and make a phone call, you probably should not be trading. And I say this because in the spirit of many people send me emails, uh, they might write a comment, and what happens is, is they'll ask me about, hey, can I do this in my broker? Um, you know, will my broker allow me to do this? Do you know how I can do this on this platform? So I get a lot of questions regarding these kinds of things, and I don't really have a brokerage platform that I own, and you're not really going in, and you don't have an account with my brokerage platform. So for you to go and contact me to explain to you how their brokerage platform works, it really doesn't make sense. You're putting in another um, barrier in between the goal that you're trying to get. So instead, the better approach is to make a phone call to your broker and get the direct answer that you need because I don't know your account situation. I don't know how you have your account set up. I don't know if you're able to trade options. If you're asking me an options questions and why you can't trade certain option contracts, I have no idea. So if you're not willing to pick up the phone and call, you're probably not willing to do the homework. You know, is that really true? I don't know. Maybe you just think that I know everything and that's not always the case. But, uh, you know, pick up the phone, call your broker if you have a broker related question because that's all about doing your homework and not to mention, you get a direct path to your uh, question. You get a direct solution to someone that knows specifically what your account looks like. So ultimately, picking up the phone is really one of the things that you should be able to do in order to get those questions answered regarding your personal account on within your broker. The next thing is looking at the market and if you think trading is like gambling, okay? So if you already made up your mind that stock trading is like gambling, you probably shouldn't be trading. Because this to me usually tells me that you don't have enough experience or education to understand what's going on. I've done an episode on this on um, trading and how it relates to gambling and the psychology of it, which I'll link in the description of this video. Uh, but ultimately, if you assume that trading is like gambling, again, you already have this mindset that it's basically throwing money and you're not really looking at investing or you're not looking at the strategies of an investor or a stock trader. Instead, you're looking to just have a crapshoot, see what happens, make some money, maybe you lose some money, but there's no consistency behind it. So if you already have this mindset approach to it, then you probably should do something else or you need to invest more in your education. When you have more education, then you can go back to it and understand the business. But otherwise, you could also think like real estate investing is also like gambling, especially if you're 10 years old, if you don't know it and you don't understand it, of course, you're not going to know what you're doing. So it takes that education and experience to really understand what's happening and then you can become successful. Just look at some of the successful traders and investors like Warren Buffett. Of course, he probably didn't think it was like gambling. In either case, if you think of it like gambling, then you need to back up, hold on, stop trading, go back, do more education, get some more experience, and then again, move forward after that. All right, so here's a fun little one. Uh, how about when you're going uh, shopping 
okay, whether it's a grocery store or any kind of shopping, and you're waiting in line, and let's just say there's like seven people in front of you, and uh, they're pushing the cart, right? So you have your cart right there, and you have a basket full of groceries, and then there's a bunch of people in front of you, and then they're going through the checkout line, and they're going fairly slowly. So now the question is, is are you uh, mad? Okay, how is your patience? That's ultimately what that tells me is, are you patient? Are you willing to wait in line without getting frustrated? And really, if you aren't, then you probably aren't going to be patient enough to get into the stock that you need to get into at the right price. You'll probably want to jump into things. Let's get this done. Let's get the quick money. You know, so this is an interesting little test that you should watch out for yourself and be self-aware that, hey, am I mad? Am I frustrated? Am I, uh, you know, do I want things to hurry up? And of course, we usually do want things to pick up, but how are you dealing with that behavior? How are you dealing with your internal battle that's going on? So if you're willing to be, wait, say, hey, it's okay, you know, wait till things clear out and then it'll be your turn, then that's a lot better approach when it comes to stock trading and investing. But if you're getting frustrated, probably you shouldn't trade because then you'll be trading as a frustrated person. Then you'll be uh, you know, mad or worried, or you'll be um, not patient getting into those trades. So it's important that you look at your patience to being able to wait for the right opportunities when they present themselves. So do that little test and see. Otherwise, if you're a little more anxious, maybe you should hold off trading for a little bit or build up that patience mentality until you get that down a little more and then get into trading. So here's another cool little test. How about the love test? Okay, so uh, do you get in love with a certain product or service, right? So for many people, they fall in love with the Apple phones, Apple products, um, and they just love the product. And since they love the product, they usually invest in something, right? So you do the investment based on the love that you have for something. Or if you're looking for a pair of shoes and you're just constantly, hey, I love these pairs of shoes. Oh my God, I need to buy those shoes. Um, and that's how a lot of people approach purchasing and their products and, and so forth. It's okay to say, hey, I love my phone. It does a lot of great things for me as far as my business goes. Or, hey, I love the camera that I'm using. You know, it creates and produces a great video shot in very good quality. But it's not to the point where when I see something at the store that I'm all of a sudden connected to that I fall in love with it and then I have to make that purchase. So if you have to, need to, and want to, all of a sudden these things creep up as you're at the store, as you're creating a product, um, as, you're, as you're looking at something and you say, hey, I have to have it or I need to have it or oh, I really want this oh, I love this, and you say this uh, quite a bit, then this can be a problem for a person that's looking to get into stock trading. So catch yourself. If you're doing this, then you're probably not ready to trade. Again, you probably should not be trading. And this is uh, simply because you get emotionally uh, tied to a certain stock, right? So you get attached to a stock emotionally because, hey, I love Apple's products. So in that case, I'll go and invest in the stock. Or, hey, I really love the lawn mowers that John Deere is producing. I'm going to get into it. And this is what happens with people when they do like a GoPro. They love it, the, the product. They get into it. And then eventually that stock came back down. Right? Same thing with like the Groupon. Uh, same thing with the Twitter. Okay? So Twitter, you know, I don't remember the chart, but it's down in, in there. Snapchat had its first earnings uh, report and that basically is now down quite a bit. Twilio, the same thing. I think it's Twilio. So anyways, stock went up and now it's way back down or moved sideways and then back down. So anyways, if you're loving a certain thing, there's nothing wrong with, you know, really enjoying a product. But if you're saying this often that you love something quite a bit and you're saying this to products and you may have uh, the same effect when it comes to stocks. So be very careful because when you say, hey, I need to have this stock, I love it, it's gonna be great, I need to, I want to, there's too much emotions that are tied into that. So again, you're probably not ready there or at least be aware of what's happening so that way you can make some adjustments in the future. All right, so here's another great one and this is really about your uh, computer skills. 
Okay, so if you don't have uh, great computer skills or technical skills, you probably shouldn't trade. And I'll tell you back when I used to do a lot more password resetting, people would call me up, um, you know, and people would struggle resetting their password. Uh, it really told me a lot about um, people on how technical savvy they were. And sometimes when I would listen to people about just the way that they explain things on how they're using it on their computer, if I would say minimize or maximize their browser and they were struggling with that, then, or they didn't even know what that was, that ultimately told me that they weren't computer ready or they didn't have the technical skills to really trade. So if you're the person to, that struggles with password resetting, whether that's on a Capital One, Bank of America, or a popular website uh, you know, where password resetting is, should be fairly simple and their system should have no glitches, uh, if you're the type of person that doesn't know how to minimize or maximize your browser, or you don't even know what a browser is, if you struggle, let's say, checking your email, then these are some key signs where you probably should, you know, not trade or stop trading for now. And your end goal right now should be to build the computer skills. So you build your skill set up first and then you get back into trading. Now, I'm not nagging on you if you don't know this because we all start somewhere and it's perfectly okay if you don't know how to reset a password, how to check your email, or you struggle with checking your email, how to minimize or maximize a browser, or have, let's just say, multiple uh, windows open and kind of navigating that process. Because what's going to happen when you get into trading is you'll go into this trade panel that's very complicated. It's going to have a lot of windows, a lot of options, a lot of features. And you'll probably need to detach certain panels or click certain things. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of icons on there. And if you click the wrong thing, or let's say you hold a control key, and you can actually enter and get into a, you know, let's say you get into a $50,000 trade by accident, and all of a sudden you're in a trade and you made a big mistake. So that really becomes a problem. So again, you shouldn't trade if you don't have these basic skill sets of the computer of minimizing, maximizing a browser. If you don't know how to reset a password, checking your email. It's not to say, hey, you can't get there. It's just build your computer skill sets first and then get into trading because you don't want to make a huge expensive mistake. So that's a little checklist for you. Here's another good one for you. And this is really comes down to your um, purchasing as far as purchasing and investing in yourself. So investing, uh, let's just say, in a $15 book to learn about investing or to learn about stock trading or to make yourself better, whether that's, you know, even in fitness to, uh, you know, perform better, whether that's to be a little more healthy. You know, if you're not willing to, let's just say, spend a $15 book or spend $15 to get a book that'll help you do that, or just on multiple books, you know, putting in the, the effort, not only financially, but also the time and energy into it, then you probably shouldn't trade or invest in the stock market. And that is because you know, you're taking a $15 book and let's just say you're not willing to purchase a few books, even if it costs you $200 on how many books can you really buy or even $500. And now eventually you'll be trading with probably as your account grows, you, know, you might be starting with $10,000 you might be starting with $5,000. You might be starting with $500,000. Everybody's at a different point. But the thing is, is what I found is some people, even at a high degree level of income, right? So uh, some people I've talked to, what they do is they have, let's say a $500,000 account, but they didn't want to spend $50 or $200 on some books and education they did the investing thinking they knew better because this was their uh, IRA or retirement um, account, 401k, whatever the account is. And that account went back down to $100,000, right? Because they didn't understand what's going on, what's happening. Because either one, they were too cheap not to buy the books, or number two, they didn't want to invest the time and energy. And that actually cost them a lot of their retirement, a lot of their retirement savings and a lot of their income level for the future. And I ran not across just one person that this happened to, but multiple people. It's because we already think we know that we're better than that. And that's the thing. 
take the time, invest in your education, including $15, $20, time and energy, and you'll be much better off in the long run, or at least you'll be somewhat prepared, much more so than, let's just say, even if you took $10,000, which is a lot less than $500,000, and that went down to $7,000, you could have bought $3,000 worth of books, courses, uh, personal private coaching sessions, a lot of things that you could have done rather than you know, losing that $3,000. So again, something to consider that if you're hesitant to spend $15 on a book and maybe spend a little bit of time and energy reading and studying about your investments, then you probably should not trade. And the final point I'd like to make is following the herd or crowd, okay? crowd mentality or psychology. So if you're the person that's always moving towards the crowd and you know following other people, this is not the best approach when it comes to trading because I mean often you want to move with the trend and when it comes to stocks. But what happens is is if you get a news uh, a event, a news, a story that breaks out and then you follow based on that news or somebody on TV, then this is probably not the best approach. It could be due to gossip, right? So uh, somebody's talking about gossip and then you believe that rather than you know going and doing your own due diligence, your own homework. It's kind of like some of the things that I talk about as well. If you just believe every single thing that I say, then you probably shouldn't be trading. Instead, what you need to do is take these theories and concepts, evaluate them and go and do your own homework and do your own due diligence and your own research. Now, I try to make most of my material as effective as possible and as detailed as I can uh, in these videos. But still, even when I'm re looking at a stock, when I'm mentioning certain things on the earnings reports, you still need to do your own homework, right? You still have to go out and do your own homework because the way that I think is different than the way that you think. And the way that I make decisions might be different than the way you make uh, trading or investing decisions. So do your own homework, do your own due diligence. But if you've ever heard of the Google effect, right? So the Google effect where people do research on Google and they say, hey, well, it's on Google. There's a website that has it. Doesn't mean it's true. And the same thing happens with reviews on books, right? So some of these books that get reviewed, some people just nag on them and they don't realize that some of the reviews, what happens is actually, the competition buys these books and does bad reviews or even mediocre reviews so that way it creates doubt in your mind for that product and then it pushes you actually to other products which could be that competition. So you may not realize that this is happening but that's the way the game is played. That's the same thing in news and gossip and trading and if you're the type of person that's not doing your own due diligence and your own homework then you need to pause on your trading Take a step back, don't trade, and then as you start building your own self-awareness, as you start you know, doing your own due diligence, your own homework, your own research, then you can get back into trading. All right, so thanks for joining me in this video. I hope that gives you some insights on if you should or should not trade or some key things to test and be aware of uh, within yourself on maybe you shouldn't be trading. Now, in order to actually follow these kinds of guidelines, you really need to be aware of yourself. So look at yourself from that outer perspective, honestly, and see if any of those things kind of come up. Now, these are not the only reasons on why you shouldn't trade. There's a lot of other money factors, psychological factors, risk tolerance factors that I didn't mention. But just as a quick list for you to kind of look at some things, then by all means, use this list as a guide to see, hey, maybe I shouldn't be trading yet. Maybe I should do my own due diligence and research a little more about the technical side of trading and building up my computer skill set. Or maybe, hey, I should invest a little bit more on my own uh, personal education, build up my ex uh, education, and then go into trading because now I have some knowledge and then I'll go and build some experience. So again, it's all just a combination of things. You want to make sure that you're taking a look at all these factors and being honest with yourself. Otherwise, if you get into trading before you're ready and you have some of these issues and problems, they can cost you a great deal to your account. So be very careful. Thanks again for joining me in this video. I hope you really found it helpful. If you did and you want to see other training videos that I have, by all means, uh, click the thumbnail over here on this side. Or if you want to see some other great training videos that aren't always listed or join me in a live class, 
click the thumbnail right up here and get on my newsletter list where I share with you when those live classes are released. Thanks again. And in the end, remember, do what you love, contribute to other people, but most importantly, live life abundantly. I'll see you next time.